This is the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus. I just it's lazy, didn't take it out of its case. <clears throat> this is the Raspberry Pi 4. Some changes along the way with power and the display out and faster processor, things like that. But the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus still had a ton of gaming images and uh, all sorts of retro gaming goodness along the way. Controller compatibility, um, beautiful cases, custom, one of my favorites right here being the Nintendo 64 case. But, you know, you had Retro Flag coming out with SNES cases. You could buy kits with the Pi and the power supply and some generic SNES style controllers for $80 or less for two player goodness, tens of thousands of games to play. So in this video, we're gonna give you my top three Raspberry Pi 3B Plus images to get you on your way if you wanna go the pre-built route. But also note that this particular unit, the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus, is still a bargain. And you guys should grab one if you don't. Those of you who are gonna have one in your you know, arsenal because you bought the four, and now the three is just being neglected. The neglected child over here. And if I were you, I would pick one of these images I'm about to show off, or you know, build your own, put it in your guest bedroom. Maybe it's not your primary driver, but it's a nice back end. Or maybe you want to gift it to a friend this holiday season. You really have a lot of possibilities. The main point here being, it's still plenty capable and still plenty amazing. So let's go ahead and check this out. In number three, we have Galicio's Dragon Blaze recall box image. It's 128 gigabytes in size, thus making it one of the more affordable options here. Now this one comes with a little controversy because as I mentioned in the video when I fully reviewed this, that it does come in Portuguese to start. So you do have to change the language. And it's not just one click of the button. After you change the language, there are still some of the metadata and some of the options still in Portuguese, as well as the Scum VM games and Cave Story and a few others. But pretty much 90% of the console game, or all pretty much all the console games um, and, and you know most of the other games are in English and what I really like about this one is it includes the Portuguese releases for a lot of games it also includes like the UK and the uh, Japanese versions as well as well as the US so it gives you this really diverse set of games and a lot of games you've probably never seen before now don't get it me wrong a lot of those games are not even that great anyways but if you're really into video gaming and you think you've seen it all, you might see some things here you've never seen before, which is kind of cool. That might also be a downside for some people because it might be a little bit too many games and you get lost and it's like this is just too much stuff. I have a you know a short life, you know, <laughs> why why you know I can't just I just give me the best of the best. And this is absolutely the opposite of that. As I said in my other video, it is a kitchen sink build literally just throw in the whole kitchen sink it even has hacked games which are you know fan made games and games where people hack the code to kind of change some of the sprites and things like that and so the basis of the game is the same but a slightly different uh, variation for example you know street fighter kart which is a mario kart street fighter uh you know hack uh, now as far as performance goes recall box is really sweet i like recall box because it's very user friendly and it actually has a lot of the default settings running really well so here playing playstation one but also psp dreamcast and n64 because you're allowed to you know really you know get in there with low settings and a lot of it is pre-set up for you just out of the box you can get some pretty darn good performance which um you know, depending on what version of, of uh, you know, a, a RetroPie build you're on, you may not have as good of luck without some calibration. So this is, uh, this is still warm to my heart because it packs a punch, it packs the whole kitchen sink, and uh, it looks good to boot. Um, like I said, you know, the biggest complaints I hear on this all the time are the Portuguese issue, which I feel like you can get behind, but if you can't get behind it, maybe the next one will be your cup of tea. Coming in number two, Dara's Zone dropping this 400 gigabytes. So now we're jumping up quite a bit. But you might be wondering, what am I going to get with those extra 400 gigabytes? Well, you're going to get a ton more PlayStation games. Huge PlayStation collection on this particular image. You're also going to be getting a ton more systems as well. He goes into Amiga, Amiga CD, and a lot more computer-based games. Uh, also, you're not going to have to change the language with this one. Although Darzone is Italian, a lot of everything you see here is 
in English, you're also going to get your Daphne, which a lot of people like, um, and then some huge arcade sets and things like that. However, you're going to have to buy a 400 gigabyte SD card, which is going to run you a little bit more money. That being said, the themes on here are beautiful and they're very user friendly and very um, tight, as in very um, not hardware um, uh, reliant. So you're going to get a really smooth experience on this. There's some themes out there that the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus just has a hard time handling. The other thing you're going to notice, just like Galicio's image, is there's no video snaps on this image. So when you click into a system and you go to a game, you're only going to see the box art and a screenshot and, um, you know, the cartridge itself. So um, it's very, uh, you know, smooth and streamlined in that regard. But some people like a little bit more bling, a little bit more flair. And, um, you know, th this one is a little more compact in that regard. As far as bezels, this one does have bezels. A lot of them have his little DZ logo on it. If it's a console game, it'll be a TV. If it's an arcade, they have a little coin slot on it. Um, compatibility wise, this thing's running great out of the box. You're not going to have to do any fixes or anything like that. And uh, I wouldn't update it. I think it's fine the way it is, but you can easily update it to the latest version of RetroPie if that's something you want to do. Now, um, huge, huge collection if you're into those games. That's really why I give it number two. I think this might actually be number one for a lot of people because it um, has a lot of those computer based games that you're not going to see on the number one winner. Um, now, uh, this does have that, that random game generator, which uh, randomly selects a game. And as I mentioned with these themes, it has more or less the similar theme in different variations, the one you're seeing now. So it's a solid, solid choice. If somebody I knew was really into like Atari and Amiga and Commodore 64, and also if they wanted a large PlayStation set, I would say, here's your, this is it. No questions asked. There you go. You've got it made. Now, um, the next image, though, you'll see it does have a couple things that I like that why I might go one versus the other. But in number two, Darzone's Ultimate King image, a really, really great uh, contender here. In number one, you have Virtual Man's 400 gigabyte Retro Bliss. And he doesn't even advertise this image anymore. It's end of life. However, it should be full of life because this is a really solid image and it holds up today. As I mentioned when I reviewed this image recently, that it's good to go right out of the box. What I like about it is it has Hursty themes, Hursty theme randomizer, a ton of introduction videos, uh, you know, uh, the bezel project. It just has all the bells and the whistles, including a ton of scripts and options pre-installed for you. So you won't have to hook up a keyboard to this. You'll literally just pump this image out, hook up your favorite controller, and be rocking and rolling in no time. It's really that simple. And there was a lot of little tweaks done here. Um, as I mentioned with the options, the themes, um, even some optimizing going into picking which emulators to use and which resolution settings to use to get the best performance while maximizing the looks at the same time. So, um, you know, it to me, it was just a really well thought out image. And at 400 gigabytes, you can pack a punch on it. Now, note, since this image, he's built a 512 gigabyte image for the Raspberry Pi 4 based on this uh, exact build. It was simply upgraded. So while there is a better version of this out there, especially for the Raspberry Pi 4, for those on a budget, this is still one to consider. So as I mentioned, you know, a lot of this is user preference. Some people hate bezels. Some people don't like too many games on their builds and to each their own. Now there's plenty of builds out there. There's the best of the best build. There's some smaller builds. There's builds that focus more on certain genres of games like light gun games and everything in between. But if I was just getting a build to put on my TV to have there for when I do want a retro game, when I want to play Zelda, when I want to play some fighters with some friends, when I want to do those kinds of things, this would absolutely do the trick and be a lot of fun to boot and really easy and beautiful. You know when you're booting this thing up and your friends are over, they're going to be like, wow, what is this? When they're looking at all the, you know, the menu items and everything else, it really is kind of these ultimate image with which, to be fair, you probably wouldn't ever have enough time to play every single game on it. 
But um, that's not the point, right? <laughs> so I want to finish with thanking the community, thanking you know all the people that make third-party accessories, the Raspberry Pi Foundation, RetroPie. You know, even a lot of people don't realize that a lot of this, the back end is RetroArch and Labretro and, you know, these a lot of developers and people behind the scenes that make this possible to have such an epic build. There's also people that do like the artwork that you're seeing right now, like someone somewhere put that together. Um, and so it's quite amazing when you really look at all the pieces that go in this. Speaking of pieces, you know, that's the last thing I would say is the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and just the, any Raspberry Pi for, for that matter. You can go download a base image and build it yourself. That's part of the fun is the tinkering and playing. Most people who watch my videos probably spend more time tinkering and editing and adding games than they do actually playing the games. Yes, that's true. So um, that's what I think. That's my top three. Let me know if you think I missed one or I should revise this. I'll definitely be doing more series like this. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.